Hey guys, Luke here from Feather and Down Homestead. Today I got up this morning and today's a bit of a sad day. I have to butcher around 40 chickens. Now I woke up early and now it is uh, 7 a.m. I plan to be down there setting up and everything. But I just wanted to say this is the first day that I can feel winter is coming. Today's cold, today's dark. It's 7 a.m. here. A few weeks ago, this was light, and now it's dark. So winter is coming. Now what I wanted to say is, if you don't like seeing chickens butchered, don't watch this video. And for you guys that want to see chickens butchered, or want to see how to do it yourself, come see me just in a bit. See you guys soon. Okay guys, it's now, uh, now light, um, so I've just pretty much set up this, uh, this butchering area. I've got um, behind me my, my plucking machine, um, and then we've got some tables under a tarp in case it rains or to hide from the sun. And um, then I've just got a bin filling up with water, and I put ice in there for the chickens once they're finished. And um, the only thing I don't have at the moment is a scolding area. Um, just going to do it a bit differently than last time. I'm just going to get a pot with hot water from up the top. And as it gets dirty, I'm going to tip that out. So we'll try that method, see if it works better than last time. But um, last time I think we had 49 chickens to butcher. I think there's about 39 maybe, so 10 less. So yeah, I'm just uh, waiting for some helpers to come and help me out with the processing and then I'm going to go and get these uh, cobs. But um, just a short story that um, I'm not sort of happy with. Uh, with all the homesteading community around the world, we all go with these, these uh, hybrid meat chickens, cobs or Ross chickens or... Cornish crosses, or whatever you call them. But um, I think there needs to be a change in the way that we do that. I mean, I get that we have them for eight weeks and they're ready for processing. Uh, the food is cheap because they're only eight weeks and we just buy them as chicks so there's no hatching, there's, it's, it's easy. Anyone can kind of do it, but um, the thing is, it's unsustainable, and as a homesteader, I just feel that that passion to want to um, to want to show people how to to breed their own heritage breed chickens and be sustainable, be just as cheap as those Cornish crosses or cob chickens, and um, to be able to do it like all yourself. There's nothing wrong with community building, but I think uh, all these hybrids, they're kind of like mutant chickens and they grow real quick, which is great. But the way I think is, I, we breed our own chickens, a lot of dual purpose chickens. Um, so I can hatch my own eggs. Um, I won't have to pay $6 per chick. It's around roughly what we pay for our cobs. And Yes, they'll take maybe 18 weeks rather than eight weeks to grow out. But I think they would eat less food and I wouldn't have to pay for the chicks, so I'd save money there. I reckon I could make it cost the same amount of money, but it'd be sustainable. So what's the space next season, next spring? I will be doing 
a couple of different breeds um, along with the cobs um, to see how that goes money wise and see if I can make it self sustainable because all those all those big homesteaders out there like Justin Rhodes like um, sow the land and uh, all those all those bigums they all do these meat chickens and I just want to show people that it doesn't have to be that way there is a different route out there and next year well this year this year spring um, I want to show you but anyway I'm, I'm mambling on mambling way too much mambling um, let's get on to the fun stuff well not fun it's not fun let's get on to butchering some chickens shall we okay so let's show you what we do nope okay let's show you again for the third time how we butcher these chickens now they are called cobs they are meat birds and so once we have got a cob then we will kill them by chopping their heads off. Now I'm not going to show you the area because Dad told me not to. Once we have chopped the heads off, then we will boil them in water. And once we've boiled them in water, we will do some plucking. This is our plucking machine. It goes round and round and round. And it plucks all the chickens. And after we have plucked and boiled the chickens, we shall pluck, well, we shall pluck the extra feathers off and we shall pull the guts out. Now, I don't think, yeah, none of them have been done yet, so this is the process. So, once we finish that, then we will be starting to put them in this black bucket. So in here is some cold water. So then the chickens are nice and refreshing. Now, sadly, before they get killed, they know that they are going to get killed once they've seen it. And they might cry, which is really sad. There's a couple more ones, isn't there? Yeah, that's true. Raven, into your house! Yeah. Is that yummy chicken? Yeah. <laughs> She's gonna like chicken. <laughs> You're allowed on the shelf. Which lady doesn't put the lid on? Guys, I've got something for you. <laughs> this is how they fart. Whoa, look at all that. You farted! Okay, so we've, um, <clears throat> we've butchered uh, about 30, 30 cobs so far. We're down to our last seven. So um, we haven't done much videoing, just getting on with the job. Sometimes that happens. But I'll try to get as much footage of these last seven, try to show you how we, how we butcher them. So um, I'll just put these in the, the cage and then take them up there.
Okay, so here's a chicken here. I'm gonna kill it down here, but I, I won't show you how I kill it because you know I don't like all that gruesome stuff. So I'm gonna kill it and then we'll go over there. Okay, so once the head's chopped off and it stopped uh, jumping around everywhere, throwing blood everywhere, um, then I, I normally just chuck it in, in a cold bucket just to get that last bit of um, bit of blood off. And this water from this bucket, all the blood in that, I can chuck on the garden. Good fertilizer. But once I've gave that good soak, good clean. I then chuck it over here into the scolder. Now I won't put it in here too long because um, when I put it in the plucker it'll, it'll bruise if I leave it in here too long but you just want to put it in here until you can um, pluck it quite easily. I have no idea what temperature it is, it's just um, it's just pretty hot. But yeah, I'll leave it in there for maybe half a minute, depending on the um, temperature. If it's a bit, if it's a bit warmer, I'll leave it in there longer. And if it's hotter, yeah. So that's coming off pretty, pretty easily. So I'll take that out and chuck that over the plucker. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit noisy, but um, this is our plucking machine. Perfect, but um, still do. Okay, that's all plucked, so it's not um, it's not perfect. You know, got a bit of feathers here and there, but I'll hand pluck the rest of them. Um, the plucker's losing a bit of uh, some of these things have fallen off, so it's not as good as it uh, was. I have to replace these, um, but it's good enough. Okay. Into the butchering pile.
Okay guys, that's us for the day. Our biggest chicken was 3.15 kilo. I don't know what that is in uh, pounds. Somewhere close to 7 pounds, I think. Um, but we got 39 of them. And we've chucked them in the freezer. We still had about uh, 30 odd from, um, from our butchering before. So... I've had to empty out the freezer and um, put the new ones at the bottom and the old ones at the top. And uh, yeah, we were thinking about butchering a cow soon, but um, as you can see, um, a cow would normally fill up this whole freezer. It's a, I think, seven, 700 litre freezer. And it's half full of uh, chicken and then half full of. Um, corn cobs and the tomatoes and some beef still um, left over but yeah it's a freezer full of uh, chicken basically um, so we'll have to do a cow when we get um, rid of some chicken I have to eat chicken two, two three times a week but um, yeah uh, sorry I didn't get so much footage today sometimes it's better just to get stuff done and I apologise for that but um, that's all done. Now I've got to go and uh, have dinner, then feed animals. So it's a busy night. So I'll see you guys later, wherever you are in the world. Daytime, nighttime, morning time. That's just my uh, water pump, by the way. Don't look at all those cobwebs behind me. Anyway, I'll catch you guys later, and I'll see you in the next one. Look out.